So today we're going to discuss the second section of chemical reactions, talking about how to balance our chemical equations. So we talked about how to write them from the word form, and now we're going to talk about how to balance. Okay, well atoms are conserved in a chemical reaction, meaning you can't gain or lose any, they just change the compounds that they're bonded with. So the identities, or the formulas, of the compound must never be changed in balancing a chemical equation. So let me get a pen. So what that means is if we have a compound like CO2, well that's carbon dioxide, it's a gas most of the time. If we wanted to add one more oxygen, we cannot change the subscript. So we cannot make it CO3. The only thing we can change are the subscripts in front and then start balancing on the other side of the reaction to get the same number of oxygen atoms. So you can't change the identity of the formula. Okay, so you're, normally we balance by trial and error. We're going to also talk about the math method. And the best balanced equation has the smallest integers, or is the most simple version. Okay, so technically you could have something where your coefficients are like twos and fours, but if you can simplify that down to ones and twos, then that's the best equation. And we'll look at an example of that. So, for example, we have hydrogen gas plus oxygen going to two water molecules, and I can see that there's a mistake here. This should be an O2 because oxygen is a diatomic. We never write the one coefficient, so there would be a one here, but we don't ever write that. It's kind of the same thing as with the subscripts. If we don't put anything, we assume it's a one. Okay, and so this is the non-simplified version of this reaction, and again, there's a mistake. There should be a two. Uh, so we have four hydrogens to two oxygens to four waters, but the more simple version is two hydrogens to one oxygen producing two waters. The ratio is the same, it's just more simplified. Okay, and the simplified version is always the best. Okay, so some steps to balance. So we're going to read the description and write the appropriate formula into an unbalanced equation. If the chemical formulas aren't given for you already and you have the word version, then you're going to need to write the balanced chemical formulas first. We can balance by inspection, which we call guess and check, or the math method. Um, usually when you're doing guess and check, you start with the most complicated molecule, but again, we're going to look at both methods. And then check. Make sure that the number of atoms for each type of element is balanced and is the simplest. You should really never get any of these wrong if you go back and check your work. Okay, and if they don't come out right, then you need to try again, and, and maybe you made a mistake somewhere. So don't give up on them. They all have a correct answer. Okay, so let's look at the math method first. So first you're going to assign each component a variable. Oh, man, there's mistakes everywhere in here. That should be that direction. Okay, so assign each component a variable, A, B, C, D, however many components there are. These would represent the coefficients in a balanced chemical equation. Then you're going to write an equation for each element or polyatomic, and we will talk about that, with the arrow sign becoming an equal sign. And you're going to assign a number to one of the variables. Usually we say A equals 1, but you could say B equals 10 million, or C equals 0 0.5, whatever you want. It's just that A equals 1 is often the easiest, but it doesn't always have to be A. Then we're going to solve our system of equations. Multiply to get rid of any fractions, if that is necessary and then replace the variables with our numbers, and these become our coefficients. And then again, if we needed to simplify, that we would do that at the end. Okay, so let's look at an example. So we have solid potassium, so that's K, and it's a solid, reacts with liquid water to form, so that's our arrow, gaseous hydrogen, we know hydrogen is a diatomic, and potassium Hydroxide that dissolves in water, so that means it's aqueous. And I know potassium is a 1 plus, and hydroxide is a 1 minus, and so that's a neutral compound. Okay, so for the math method, I'm going to assign variables to each compound, so A, B, C, and D. And then I'm going to write an equation for each element or polyatomic. So for potassium, that's A. There are no potassiums in the second component, so I hit the arrow sign. That becomes my equal sign. There are no potassiums in the third one, and I have one potassium, and that's got a D link to it. So for potassium, A equals D. So now let's look at water. Well, technically, water is a combination of hydrogen and the hydroxide ion. So a lot of times we can write, write water as HOH. So we have the H cation and the OH anion. 
Well, if we look for um, a simpler way to sometimes balance equations is instead of balancing all the elements, is to look for polyatomics that are still together. Technically, hydroxide is a polyatomic. And if we look at our products, we also see hydroxide in the same form with the potassium. And so instead of balancing hydrogen and oxygen, we can balance hydrogen and then hydroxide. So let's write an equation for hydroxide. Here we have one hydroxide, so that's B. That's a B. Equals, okay, now here we have hydrogens, but this is not in the hydroxide form. Okay, looking at these polyatomics would be the same thing as finding like sulfate, nitrate, anything like that. Okay, here we have one hydroxide, so in this case, B equals D. So now let's balance our hydrogen. Well, here, because we have written water as HOH, there's only one hydrogen. So this is B equals, now if we go to our third component, we do have two hydrogens. And this is not linked with our, our hydroxide. So this would be 2C. And I believe those are the only components present in our reaction. So now, over to the side, I'm just going to write a little spot to record all my answers. I'm just going to set A equal to 1, but again, like we talked about, you could set any variable equal to any number. But A equals 1 works here. So if A equals 1, if I look at my first reaction, A equals 1, then 1 equals D. So I'm going to put a 1 for D. If I go down to my second reaction, since D is equal to 1, that means B equals 1. And now for my last reaction, if B equals 2C, 1 in for B equals 2C. I need to divide by 2 for both to get rid of the 2, and so C is equal to 1 half. Now you may think, oh, that's a really simple equation. I do not have to write it out. And maybe you don't, but if I don't write it out, sometimes I will do it backwards meaning that I will make like the C equal to 2 instead of 1 half. And so writing it out just helps me make sure I don't make a mistake. So if you can do it in your head, great. But it doesn't take that long to write it out if that helps you. Okay, so now we do have a fraction, and we don't really want fractions as our coefficients. So the way to get rid of this fraction is to multiply it by 2. But because I've done it to this one, I need to do it to all the others. So I have 2, 2, and 2. So now my reaction becomes 2 potassium, so now I'm replacing my number, the variables with the numbers, plus 2 liquid waters goes to 1, so remember we don't write it, 1 hydrogen plus 2 potassiums, and those are aqueous. So now let's just check, 2 potassium, 2 potassium. Let's see, uh, 4 hydrogen, 2 here, plus another 2, so that's good, 2 oxygen, 2 oxygen, Okay, we should be all set. This should be balanced. Okay, now let's look at the guess and check or the inspection method. Here you're going to list each element on both sides of the reaction, tally up the quantity of each element on both sides, and then go back and forth and change coefficients and thus the quantities of the elements until you get the same number on both sides of the reaction. You can also just inspect and we'll show an example of that as well. Okay, so we have ammonia gas. Ammonia is NH3. Ammonium would have an additional hydrogen and is a 1 plus. So that's how I tell the difference between those. Reacts with, so that's a plus, oxygen gas. Oxygen's a diatomic. To produce gaseous nitrogen monoxide and gaseous water. Now here we could write water as HOH, but because I don't see the hydroxide ion on the reactant side, that's not really going to be helpful in this case. And so we'll just leave it as H2O. So now we're going to write down all our elements on both sides. And I just do it in one order. It doesn't really matter as long as you get them all. And I just go in the order that the reactants are usually. So initially we have one nitrogen on this side and one over here. And then we have three hydrogens and two here. And oxygens we have two. Now here we need to add up all the oxygens. So we have one on this side and one on this side, making two total. So if we take a look, looks like the only thing right now that is not balanced is our hydrogen. So let's deal with that first. The only way to make 3 and 2 the same number is to multiply 2 by 3 and 3 by 2. So I'm going to add a coefficient out front. Now that is going to change my hydrogens to 6, but it's also going to change my nitrogens. And then if I add a 3 out in front of the water, that makes my hydrogens 6, but it also changes my oxygens. I have 3 here, but I can't forget that I have this other one, making it 4. Okay, so my hydrogens are good, but now I'm just messed up everything else. So let's look at the nitrogens, because they only occur in one 
compound on each side and things that only occur in one spot on each side are a little easier versus the oxygen where it's in two spots in the product side and that can make things a little more complicated. So we'll save that one for last. So if I look at the nitrogens, I need two on the product side, so I put a two out front. That fixes my nitrogen problem, but now my oxygens are different, so I have two and then another three, so that makes five total. So now there's really no happy number for two to two and five. It's not doesn't work out really nice. So here's where we can use fractions to our benefit. If I multiply the oxygen by two, no, not two fifths, whoops, other direction. Let's take that out. Okay, if I multiply the oxygen by five halves, that's basically like taking five halves times two, because there's two oxygens. So that cancels out the twos, and that gives me five, which is what I want. Now everything technically is balanced, but I can't have this fraction. So I need to multiply everything through by 2 to get rid of the 2 on the bottom, kind of like I did for the math method, only you know the coefficients are written in the equation. But it's the same idea. So if I multiply everything through by 2, this becomes a 4. That gets rid of that. This becomes a 4. And this becomes a 6. And it, it should be balanced. So I should have, and it's nice to rewrite it. It's kind of messy. 4 NH3 plus 5 O2 goes to 4NO plus 6 water. And let's just double check. 4 nitrogen, 4 nitrogen. 4 times 3 is 12 hydrogen. 6 times 2 is also 12. 5 times 2 is 10 oxygen. 4 plus another 6 is 10. Yay, we are balanced. Okay, we also talked about just using inspection. And once you get more familiar with balancing, sometimes you don't have to go through the whole writing process, and you can kind of just look at it. And that makes things go a lot faster. All right, so glass is sometimes decorated by etching patterns on its surface. Etching occurs when hydrofluoric acid, so HF, and it's aqueous, most acids are, reacts with silicon dioxide, that is a type 3, and it's in the glass, so that's got to be solid, to form gaseous silicon tetrafluoride, so silicon F4, it's a gas, and liquid water. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of inspect. So let's see, I'm going to look at the fluorine because there's four here and only one here, and so I'm going to put a four out front, because remember, we have to keep the identity of the components the same, so I cannot put a four down here that changes the compound. So if I put the four here, now I've changed the hydrogens, I have four hydrogens, here I have two, so if I put a two out front, now my hydrogens are okay, but that changes my oxygens, I now have two oxygens, well if I look over here I have two, so that's good, and the last one to check on is silicon, and it's good, so I'm done. And I didn't have to do all that writing. Uh, so this is something, you know, once you get more comfortable with them, you're doing the same process, you're just not writing everything down. Okay, so what I'd like you guys to do is try these next three examples on your own. Use whatever method you want, go back into the video, you know, rewatch how I did the two different types of methods. Try these on your own, even if you think they might be wrong, just try them, because this is how you're going to learn. Okay, so there are in your notes, but I'll flip to the next two screens for you, and you can pause it um, in case you don't have your notes with you. All right, and then we'll talk about this in class. Okay, so here's the second one. So you can go ahead and pause it if you need to. And here's your third one. Okay, so again, please try these three examples, and we'll go over them in class, but you really need to try them on your own as a way to start practicing these methods. All right, have a good day.